All right, so next we're going to go ahead and talk about some other more traditional style workstations. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. All right, thank you very much. So not only do we have the all-in-one and the mobile workstation, the two workstations I have here are desktop tower workstations. Um, there are a couple of products we have which are not represented here. The ones we have here are the high-end premium workstations, which uh, really do suit the, the high-end tasks that a lot of people here at GTC will be doing. <coughs> Um, this is the Z620 workstation. It's a dual socket design, and in a minute I'm going to shut it down and open it up to show you how we implement that because it's a very cool piece of uh, engineering. Um, before I look at the workstation, I just want to draw attention to the display, <coughs> which is the HP Dream Color display. You'll notice it has the same logo up here that the, we saw on the mobile workstation just now. And the model number is the LP2480ZX. <coughs> Dream Color Display has been out for a number of years now, and it has a fairly good following, uh, especially in the film and animation spaces, um, because of its superior color performance, superior blacks, contrast ratio, stability, calibratability, and a number of other features that make it ideal for some of those color critical workflows. I won't go into the detail now. That would fill up your memory on, the, on your camera, but uh, just take it from me. It's a very, very cool, cool display. <coughs> Focusing on the Z620 itself, I'm going to take the opportunity now to shut down because I want to pull things out of it and I regard it as bad manners to pull components out of a workstation when it's still running. They don't like it. <laughs> so once this is shut down, I'll be able to open it up. <coughs> Just an interesting aside, the industrial design that we have here for the 620 and the 820 was actually des designed for us by BMW. So BMW has a division called BMW um, Design Works who do industrial design for other clients, including HP. Um, and they, they, they define the design language like the brushed aluminum sides, the slight indentation here in the middle of the box, the, the handles, the vertical lines. But the actual engineering, every single mechanical component here was designed by HP in Fort Collins, Colorado. So inside the box, we have an objective of keeping things tidy, uh, keeping things thermally controlled, acoustically controlled. Um, but one of the characteristics of Intel's latest architecture for CPUs is that the CPU must have memory on both sides of it for a server class CPU like this one. And that makes it take up a lot of space. And on this motherboard, we do not have the space for two CPUs with their associated memory. And so, I'm going to have to hand the microphone over for a moment. What we have here is the second CPU. So the first CPU is, on the, is there on the motherboard, but for customers who want two CPUs in this workstation, they get this additional riser, which supplies the second CPU and additional memory. And uh, this piece of engineering is um, very elegant, very robust, and has been working very well for us. So the, uh, the value of the Z620 workstation is two CPUs, each of which can be up to eight cores, giving you 16 cores of, of processor power uh, in what is actually quite a small form factor. It's, co it's compact and it's, it's manageable. So how about the actual airflow on the desktop? Um, how is that handled with the actual unit? Well, so airflow is something we take hugely seriously. Um, it's something that we simulate, we also test. Typically, we'll rig up one of these things in our lab with 100 or more um, thermocouples in all sorts of critical places around the motherboard to monitor exactly where the heat is going to get it right. And we will iterate our design until we know it's correct. <coughs> so some of the objectives we have will be to make sure that heat coming from one CPU doesn't get inhaled by the next CPU in line in the chassis. Um, other things will be to make sure that there are individual zones where memory isn't donating heat to the CPU, for example. Um, <coughs> so this is a, a very thermally efficient chassis. And, and the more you can get the, the flow right, the less hard you have to drive the fans. And the less hard you drive the fans, the quieter it is overall. Well, everything looks extremely interesting on it, especially the way you guys had built the actual second CPU on the secondary tray. Um, so what would be the general starting prices on a unit like this as well? What, what would we expect to see? Well, 
what, the way we bring a, a workstation to market is to have it highly, highly configurable. Starting price on this, I think, is around $1,600, but doesn't get you a whole lot because by the time you go for some more competent uh, CPUs with higher numbers of cores and higher gigahertz, price ramps up quite quickly with the Intel parts. Then you have the option of different uh, NVIDIA solutions. In this case, I have the Quadro, 500, uh, Quadro 5000 Fermi card, um, which in its own right is um, several thousand dollars. Um, and you can add memory up to 96 gigabytes in this particular workstation. So the price can ramp up probably, probably up to 25K on this platform, I would think. And what else do we have to take a look at? I see also the ZA20. Um, could you go ahead and tell us a little bit more about this unit as well? I would be happy to. This is HP's flagship workstation, the HP Z820. Um, you know, you guys do custom PCs, so you're probably used to motherboards and chassis and all that kind of thing. Um, we live in a different world. So we live in a world of highly qualified, highly tested and certified solutions that we know will be reliable for our customers for at least a three if not five year life cycle. Um, so, so we control pretty much everything that we support inside and how it should be configured and there's a wide range of configurations but we don't allow just everything so it's not quite in the customize it yourself space. People do though with usually success. Z820 is the highest end workstation that we offer. Um, you can see it looks similar to the Z620. <coughs> Inside though, <coughs> it looks kind of a different layout. Down here at the bottom, um, I have the, uh, the card cage baffle taken out to allow people to see the, the tasty NVIDIA hardware that I have in here. This is after all GTC. So I have two Tesla K20s and a Quadro K4000. Uh, Kepler card in there. So this is this is a configuration that NVIDIA labels Maximus where you have Tesla and Quadro in one workstation so that the Tesla cards can do the computations such as iRay which is what I have running here inside uh, Autodesk 3ds Max and then the Quadro card can do the the OpenGL or direct 3D rendering in, in the usual way. Um, let me give the microphone to you for just a moment So hide, hiding behind this baffle, we have the two CPUs. In this case, we do have enough room on the motherboard for the two E5 2600 series Xeon CPUs from Intel, plus the memory that is associated with each one. You have memory on both sides. This workstation can take a, an amazing 512 gigabytes of memory. Windows 7 can't use all of it, Linux can. Windows 8 can as well, but Windows 7 tops out at uh, 192 or something like that. <coughs> um, but we do have customers who run Linux and who buy all that memory, typically oil and gas, doing seismic exploration. They, they, they require huge amounts of memory. This baffle that I took out is more than just a baffle. We informally call it the hovercraft. <laughs> it's an assembly that carries six fans which provide what I call topical cooling. So it provides cooling exactly where it's needed. So the two fans that are tilted there at an angle, um, they butt up against the canted heat sinks on the, on the motherboard for the CPUs. And then the four other fans cool regions of memory on the motherboard. Each fan is controllable directly from the BIOS to make sure it's running just fast enough and no faster for reasons of acoustics that I mentioned earlier. So with that and some other features like the easily removable hard drive trays, it's a very serviceable, very maintainable workstation, and that's something our customers appreciate. I mean, definitely from everything you're showing us, it seems like you are tailoring all of your products towards the actual customer wants. Whether we're talking about the all-in-one in terms of the ease of accessibility, or with the actual larger workstations in terms of, just like you mentioned, same thing, toolless designs, exactly what they want, custom tailored to the actual preferences. It definitely does sound like there's a lot of great features that you guys do have to offer with your actual units. And like we've mentioned before, we just love to see what you guys have coming out in the future and, and just everything that you guys are able to produce. Um, thank you so much again for all your time with the interview. Um, and hopefully, like I said, we'll be able to see more of what you guys actually produce in the future at different trade shows like GTC and any, anything else that you guys do attend on that part. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks. All right.